Hello everyone, welcome to Ansar Kairi. In this video, we will be continuing dealing with the questions of UPSC which are related to the topic number system. So the first question says, if R and S are different integers, both are divisible by 5. Then which of the following is not necessarily true? Which means that out of these options, which is that one thing that is not compulsory ki wo hoga hi hoga. Now there are two integers R and S and they are both divisible by 5. So we can take 5 and 10. These type of questions we can deal by taking examples from ourselves and then by applying all these applications. For example, right now we have taken two integers which are 10 and 5. They say that R minus S is divisible by 5. So if we subtract 5 and 10, uh, if we subtract uh, 5 from 10, then we get 5. And if we subtract 10 from 5, we get minus 5. And both these are divisible by 5, which means that first condition is getting fulfilled. The second condition says that R plus S is divisible by 10. Now R plus S means 5 plus 10 will be equal to 15. Is this divisible by 10? Divisible by 10 means that the remainder that we receive is 0. So obviously in this case, the remainder won't be 0 if we divide 15 by 10. The answer will be in decimals or the question the quotient. So you now this means that this condition is not being fulfilled. Now let us look at the other two conditions. R multiplied by S is divisible by 25. So the product of these two numbers that is 50, it is divisible by 25. So this condition is also fulfilled. And the last condition says R square plus S square. So R square will be 25 and S square will be equal to 100. So it will be 125. Now even this is divisible by 5 as the condition says. Which means that just this second condition is not being fulfilled. So this will be our answer to this question. Now one more thing can happen. If you take two numbers like 5 and 25. In this case what will happen is the other three conditions that is the options A, C and D. They will be fulfilled. Right? A, C and D. If we check the second condition that is R plus S is divisible by 10. In this case, it will be 5 plus 25, which is 30. Now, even 30 is divisible by 10, which means that the second condition is also being fulfilled. But this is the reason why we need to take two to three examples in these type of questions so that we do not go wrong. And obviously, the other three conditions will be followed in like everything because it says not necessarily true, right? So the others will be necessarily true. Now, moving on to the next question. The age of Mr. X last year was the square of a number and it would be cube of a number next year. So, okay. So, last year. Last year ki condition kya thi? The age of Mr. X. The age of Mr. X last year was square of a number. So, we can imagine the number is X. So, it will be square of a number. And next year what happens is, so next year means present year ka we do not know, right? We do not know the age of in present year. Then they say the next year, last year, present year and then next year, which means next year the age will be x square plus 2, right? But what they say is, and it would be cube of a number next year. So y square. So y is a number. Now this for the moment we can just avoid this thing. But what the question is basically saying here is that the age of Mr. X last year was square of a number. And it would be cube of a number. Okay sorry it would be cube of a number. Cube of a number the next year. What is the least number of years he must wait for his age to become the cube of a number again. So for this, what we can do is, see, we need to find out the age last year. And uh, with this information given, like we, we are given the information that last year it was a perfect square. And next year, the age will be a perfect cube. But what we know as a clue is that the difference between two these two ages will be uh, two, right? Since we know that we're talking about last year and next year. So what will happen is we'll try to check with numbers. 
for example we we'll start with all the perfect squares so first we'll start with 4 now 4 plus 2 is 6 right so this means but 6 is not a perfect cube then we go on to the square of 3 that is 9 Now eleven. If we add two to nine, it will be eleven. But eleven is also not a perfect cube. Then we move on to the square of four. That is sixteen. Then sixteen plus two will be eighteen. But eighteen is also not a perfect cube. Then the square of five. That will be twenty-five. Now if we add two to twenty-five, we'll get twenty-seven. And this number twenty-seven is a perfect cube. The number twenty-seven is the cube of three, right? Three raised to the power three, and the number twenty-five is square of five. That is five raised to the power two. So this, so these are the two numbers. Uh, the the age of Mr. X last year was twenty-five, and next year it will be twenty-seven, which means that the present age of Mr. X is twenty-six. Now the the question that they are asking is, what is the least number of years? He must wait for his age to become the cube of a number again. So, यानी कि किसी भी number का cube उनकी age कब होएगी दोबारा? Now, since we know that three का cube हमने देख लिया twenty seven, the next perfect cube will be of four, right? So, four's cube is what? It is sixty four. Now we will subtract twenty uh, six from sixty four because they are asking the least number of years he must wait. So it is asking least number of years. ऐसे तो even five cube is one twenty five. वैसे तो ये possible नहीं है. But still, if you just go with the question, they are asking least number of years he must wait for his age to become the cube of a number again. So the next cube after three raised to the power three will be what? It will be uh, the cube of four, right? Because ये तो इन्होंने हमें बताया दिया ने the next they are asking कि उसके बाद कौन सा सा perfect cube number आया? So it will be sixty-four. So we'll uh, subtract twenty-six from sixty-four, which will be thirty-eight. So thirty-eight will be the answer to this question. If there is a policy that one third of a population of a community has migrated every year from one place to some other place, so it says that suppose there is a population X. So one third of that population of a community has migrated every year from one place to another place. What is the leftover population of that community after the sixth year? If there is no further growth in the population during this period, so suppose we imagine that there is a population that is X. So this, they are saying that one third of this population X is migrating. Okay, it is migrating to some other place. To some other place, and the total population that we have is X. But they say that this this X that is the population, it is not increasing, right? Which means that it remains constant. So, for a simpler uh, uh, explanation, we can also imagine that there are, suppose x number of dice or perhaps x number of balls in a box, and every year we take out one third of balls present in that box. So, obviously, we are not adding any more box, any any more balls into that box. So, we are just taking out. So, it will keep on decreasing, right? Now they are saying that if there is no further growth in the population during this period, what will be the leftover population of the of that community after the sixth year? So in one year, one third of the population we are, uh, the one third of the population is ex uh, is migrating, or perhaps we are taking out one third of the balls present in that box. Now see what happens is, if one third is migrating. If one third of the population is migrating, then the leftover will be two upon three, right? Leftover. So, if we add them all, then we will receive one. One is whole. So, this is the basic funda here. So, leftover population is two upon three. But what they are saying is leftover population one year. Ki hoye two upon three. 
but they are asking of six years. So leftover population of six years will be two upon three, whole raised to the power six, which means two raised to the power six and three raised to the power six. Two raised to the power six will be sixty-four, and three raised to the power six will be seven twenty-nine. Now, if we think that why are we like Raising two upon three to the power of six, like why this concept of power is applied here? The reason for this is very simple. See, the population is x, so leftover population of the first year will be two upon three into x, right? Two upon three of x. Then the total population is uska two third. Then if we draw out brackets, second year me again it will be two upon three of the population jo pehle bachi thi. फिर जो अब पॉपुलेशन बची है दिस इज दिस राइट देन अगेन विल डू टू अपॉन थ्री यानी कि जो अब अभी जो ये है ये है थ्री इयर्स के बाद वाली पॉपुलेशन जो कि बची हुई होती है देन फोर इयर्स की निकालनी है तो अगेन विल मल्टीप्लाई दिस बाय टू अपॉन थ्री यानी कि इसका भी टू अपॉन थ्री रह गया अब राइट सो इट इज जस्ट लाइक सक्सेसिव थिंग सो इस वजह से नाउ टू इंटू टू सिक्स टाइम्स विल बी टू रेस टू बाय सिक्स And three into three six times will be three raised to the power six, and hence we are directly doing this thing. So the population that will be left over, the left over population after six years, it will be equal to this. So this will be the answer to this question. Thank you.